trees and flowers and curtains and doors and pineapples under the sea. Why didn't you dip and put lost your marbles? I haven't lost my marbles. Keep them in a chest like they're right here, but I slide this open. See? It's a huge marble. And I have every single marble anyone could possibly have. How many is that? 400. How confident are you of that? About 90% confident that there's 400 in there. This one's a bouncy ball. Well, I can jump quite high, so that some of them are... Anyway. So. Confidence, confidence intervals. intervals. So, this is basically saying how certain you are of the probability of the thing in the middle. And that Ish. brings up the standard error we spoke about in the previous chapter, it does. as well as one new thing. So your standard error is your uncertainty of the mean of a sample. So you take it a is. sample, how uncertain are you that that represents the entire population? Because your chances of getting it dead on are unlikely. And then you have our z-values which uh, give probabilities of areas. Yes. Then we have confidence intervals. Which sort of pulls it all together, a yeah. lovely making sense bunch. So, if we do the marble example, we've got All right. a normal distribution like this. Quite used to drawing these now. Very used to drawing them. It does look a bit like a ghost. It does, doesn't it? Yes. Yeah. So, so, I was 90% sure that I had 400 marbles. So, it might be 5% off each side of the spectrum. Yes, because that adds up to the total 10% that I'm not certain of. So, that's about here, is about 5% either side. But we want that as a z value. Yes, so we can do that in our table. You can. We take away each one from 100 yep. or 1. So this value would be 0 0.95 because it would, it would ignore that this isn't taken. That yeah. point would be. You divide it by 100 and then take it away from 1. Yep, and that gives you the 0 0.95. You do, and you use this table to find the z value corresponding to this point here, which is 1.6449. And in fact, this version, because it's symmetrical, would be negative 1.6. It will. So then we construct a confidence interval. We do. Our interval suggests it's between two things, which is precisely what it's like. Yes. You write them up a bit like coordinates. You do, and these coordinates are, you do your mean of whatever this thing is, yep. plus or minus, so it gives you your two coordinates, yep. whatever z value you get, times by the standard error, which is just that over root n. Yeah, which makes sense because that means you're just removing these things from the side. Yes. So. so what you do is, let's make up a mean, shall we? Let's say, I don't know, what should we say the mean? Um, I don't know, just about uh, 50. We'll just have 50. These, these values are entirely made up. But if the mean of whatever this is is 50, that'd be 50 plus or minus the z value for a 90% interval. Yep, so that's just 1.6449. And times. By a standard deviation will be about 4, maybe, if the mean is 50, we'll go with. Over, over root 400. All right. Which is 20. So you do the negative one first and the positive one this second. side. Yeah. And then you have two coordinates, as it were. Yeah, so I think we should do that. So 50, well, oh, here's your calculator. Thank you very much. I didn't steal it. Maybe I did. I think, I think you might have done. Well, it's fine. So the first coordinate is 50 minus... 1.6449 times 4 divided by 20. which is 49.67 and then do the same thing except it becomes a plus yes so it would be 50 plus that times that divided by that which is 50.329 also 33 yeah <laughs> and that would be our confidence interval for 90 percent and that's pretty much all it does the only thing it does change sometimes is the percent. Oh yes, that as well. Let's do that first. Sometimes they do 95%, which means 2.5 is on the side. So rather than 0 0.95, it would be 0 0.975 you'd find the z value yeah. for. And sometimes they put in the thing they put right at the end, like last time, which was 
making the vari making a sample so the variance changes. Yes, and so what they'll do is I'll ask you a question along the form where you have to work out the variance, then construct a 90% confidence interval maybe. Yeah. And you do what we did in the previous video if you want to check that out. We use this thing up here. But we simplify it down. Yes, we have a simple version. You work out the variance and then the only thing that changes would be the square root on that on the top of this standard error up yeah. here. And that's, that's about it. it. And normally as a final part in the exams, they give you this, that you get you get up, end up with a coordinate, and they'll say the packaging says that it will be in between these two values, and then how accurate is this? So it might be dog food, it might say the weight is in between these two weights. And if the weights they suggest is in between these weights, you can say, I agree with that, and that's normally an extra mark. Yeah, and then you can say they are 95% confident, or have you? Yeah. And that's this, really. That's pretty much this. So I think we're going to do a test cell question. Yep, and then this will be a very hard. short video. And we're going to do a summary because, well, this is a summary. Yeah, and then it'll be as long as this. All right, let's do it. Question time. Test yourself, page 122, question two from this book. Absolutely. So, are we ready to get your right stuff down? All right. All right, let's do it. So, question two, all about nuts. Nuts are dispensed into tins by a machine that can be set to deliver any specified mean weight. For any setting of a machine, the weights of nuts per tin are normally distributed for a standard deviation of 3 grams. 12 tins of nuts are selected at random from a batch filled by the machine at a particular setting. The weight in grams are recorded as follows. Then there's a list of numbers. Then there's a list of numbers. You, you should look to see them there. There's one there. Yeah, alright. And part A says calculate to one decimal place the limit by 99% confidence in interval for the mean weight of nuts dispensed in this particular setting. So I'm working out the mean, yes? No? Um, no, I'm working out no, the interval. Yeah, the interval. Sorry. Do we have the mean? No. So we have to work out the mean by adding them all together and dividing by 12. Alright, so. Alright. So I'll write out the little formula here. Okay. Um, in fact, while you're doing that, I'm going to work out what the 99% Z value is. Oh. So 99% is where there is 0.5% either end. So you've got 0.995 and the Z value for that is 2.5758. And that's going to be times by the standard error, which is going to be 3 over root 12. And then plus or minus, and the mean, which Trip is working out by doing sigma x over n. Because it doesn't give you mean in the question, which is quite mean. It's fairly normal though. And this will give us two values, two coordinates. So I'll put them here. Like this. Everything's all ready for Trip. So you divide this number by 12, should get 413. 413, alright. 413 plus 2.5758 times 3 over root 12. Okay, so 413 plus 2.5758 times. Oh, goodness me. 3 over root 12, which could be simplified. If you want to go out to core 1, which you don't. And that is. The second coordinate, let it plus first, okay. which is 415.23. Okay. And so that's the upper confidence in weight. And the minus one is 410.77. And that's the lower one. Okay, and then there's a part B. There is a part B. And that asks the setting on the machine is marked as 410 grams. State with a reason whether this marking is likely to be correct. I can already see that that's unlikely because this lower confidence interval is already above this. So it's not really very good. No. They might be 95% confident, yes, but they are not 99% confident. And as that's not very confident as far as we're concerned in this question. So rubbish. It's not rubbish confident estimated. because it's below that number. Get a new nuts machine. Absolutely. Okay. Snickers. Car. Snickers. <laughs> so 
That's the question. That's how you do it. And it's from an actual exam paper. It is. And it's fairly typical of what comes up today. They come up all the time. Yep. And we're not going to do a summary of this because this pretty much is a summary. So we're going to go straight into the next thing. Yeah, we'll see you at chapter nine. Yeah. All right.